BA 202411. Matt, please. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. This one is a rezoning request. Uh, it's from Freeman Investments LLC to rezone 1.89 acres um, from RP to CM. It's from residential professional to neighborhood commercial. Uh, property is landlocked. Um, it would be at what we would consider 3880 Bemis Road or close to it. Uh, the applicant's business is diagonally in front of it, and they were at 3886 Bemis. Um, zoning map on the screen and in your packet shows the existing RP zoning that has existed on that property for 20 years or more since it was annexed. Um, it was annexed as part of a parent parcel that included all of the Highland subdivision, which is the property behind it. Um, however, this property was not developed as part of that subdivision. It's just considered a remnant leftover piece. As you can see, it's kind of irregularly shaped. Um, the developers from back then left a corridor along Bemis Road for future non-residential development. This would seem to be planned to be part of that. Um, one difference you'll note on this zoning map, you see the green line, the uh, dotted line running through the property, separating this from the RA zone property to the west. The RA and everything else on that side of the green line is in the county. It was not part of that original land purchase. So again, it's an irregular geography that has been in play here for 20 years. Um, <coughs> handout I put before you um, has a letter of opposition from one of the adjacent property owners to the east. It also includes two pages that are 11 by 17 size. Those are two of the pages from the Highland subdivision plan 20 years ago. Um, in case there's some question about uh, this property's relationship with that neighborhood. That first page is the index map of the subdivision plan for all the sheets. It has a little bit of a label on it that's hard to read. As you can see, it's not part of the subdivision. It's actually outside of the subdivision boundaries. The second page of it, I think, is sheet number five of the multi-page plan. Um, that is the portion of the subdivision plan for Edinburgh Circle which is the closest part to the subject property. And there you can see the note on this other parcel land, again, outside the subdivision. The label is part of the RP development area. So it's always been zoned RP, apparently contemplated since the beginning to be an RP type development uh, at some point in the future. The developer of the subdivision held this for a number of years. Um, it went into ownership by a bank for a couple more years. The applicant purchased it a few years ago, I think, as investment um, and perhaps as future expansion. The applicant, Freeman Investments, owns all of the CC property you see to the north here, or at least the part that's not developed. That includes the parcel that's closest to Venus Road, that's where their business is located, plus a few tenant spaces. And then on the back side or the upper hill, I call it, that's all vacant CC. That belongs to the applicant as well. One thing to note, it's described in your packet, this is a landlocked parcel, so to be developed with anything, it has to have access to a road. So in order to be developed even under RP, they would need to provide some means of access to a public street, such as Bemis Road, or the street system that runs up into that commercial village. Um, the applicant has a multitude of ways of providing it, since they own everything between here and the road system. Um, that RA property, of course, is separately owned. It's in the county. Um, RA, excuse me, RP zoning, as you know, allows multifamily. In addition to professional offices, it does not allow commercial uses. The applicant's business is commercial, and they would like to put a commercial building on this property, hence the need for the rezoning. RP would not allow the commercial building. The neighborhood commercial is the bottom end of the ladder for commercial zoning. It allows that possibility although somewhat limited. Uh, one interesting thing to note is CN zoning does not allow for multifamily. So that would be one thing that would be given up as a trade-off. So continuing along, you see the zoning pattern. Character area also reinforces that zoning pattern. This is Neighborhood Activity Center, which is sort of the lower end commercial, office professional, high-density residential type zones. Aerial imagery. Um, see the subject property, it's all cleared, although I think the grass has gotten a little hot. Um, and perhaps you, like I did a number of years ago, this looked like a detention pond. I had just assumed it was the detention pond for the neighborhood. We had some inquiries about it back then. We investigated, realized it was not a detention pond. 
and was never officially part of the neighborhood. It's just a cleared space that the world has bypassed, at least for the moment. Um, survey of the boundaries is in your packet. You see the connection out past the applicant's property, um, out toward Bemis Road. And then a site sketch, this is a draft site plan supplied by the applicant showing how they are contemplating putting a commercial building on the property and then an access driveway that links into their private parking lot with their actual existing business up closer to Bemis. Um, and I think you're showing some utility lines here, but a lot of labels. Some imagery, this is about as close as you can get to the subject property on a public street. This is in front of the applicant's business, looking eastward through their vacant commercial property. The subject property is beyond those trees that you see in the background. Uh, this is a zoom in of the subject property from the other side, looking between neighbors' houses on Edinburgh Circle. And then you, there you see the unmowed property in the back. That is the subject property. Adjacently, this is the applicant's commercial business. Um, they are operating the left half of that, and they have a few tenant spaces that they lease out. Um, this is that county property that is in front of the subject toward Bemis Road. There are two houses on there. This is the one that sort of sits in the back. The subject property is back behind this through the trees a little bit to the left. And then at Berg Circle, there are three houses that are directly above this on the circle. These are those three homes that are there as seen from the cul-de-sac of the Edinburgh Circle. Um, so with this, this is a rezoning request from RP to CN. Staff has filed a request consistent with the conference plan, consistent uh, with the standards for exercising zoning power. Those responses are there in the packet. We are recommending approval. And one quick question. You said RP allows multi-family and what else? RP allows professional offices and multifamily up to 18 units per acre, but no commercial, no retail sales of any kind. It's a, a professional zone, CN, lighting, commercial, but no. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is proposed by the applicant. Um, the applicant and their engineer are here to address that. Um, one thing to note is, I don't think it's there. It's not showing up in any of the pictures that I've seen. Um, and they can address that. So I think they have some ideas on what to do. Um, one of the curiosities of this is that zoning pattern. Um, the Highlands is zoned RP, just like this property. Um, which is unusual for a single family neighborhood. And the reason is it's the history. This property, more than 20 years ago, was planned to be an apartment complex. That plan fell through. The developers at that time saw fit to do a single family neighborhood instead. Single family homes are permitted use in RP. The RP was already in place, so they went ahead and developed a subdivision. And I think, suspect most homeowners in the Highlands do not realize that their property is owned RP. If it were not for covenants in place, um, if someone wanted to buy up two, three, four home sites, they could demolish all of that and turn it into a doctor's office or an apartment building or anything else that RP allows. Um, as unusual as that sounds, that's the truth of it. Um, so thank goodness for covenants, I suppose. But what that also means is this property, if it were to develop under RP, it's next to RP, there is no buffer yard required is a little unusual when you have, say, apartments or offices next to a neighborhood. Um, likewise, CN zoning does not require a buffering yard next to RP. So that part of the equation doesn't change. Not even a small one. So it, it's, CN is not very high up on the intensity scale. If we went to CC, we would be looking at a 20 foot buffering yard. So, so man, I'm just curious, uh, in this rendering that we have, it is, is it depicting one 4,000 square foot accessory building. If this is truly goes from RP to the CM, uh, could they just do another one at the same time on the cross road? Yes. And on that, on, that, on that section, all the way up the 
props in this area that is shown, not gravel, and also metal wheels to be put there also. Correct. Not metal all the way around, but no metal facing beamless. So well, you can't see it for beamless to start with. Right. So, so why, why would it not be metal building all the way around? That would be an interesting detail question. But the note is the size of the property allows for several buildings of commercial size, commercial usage. The only question is they've got to have sufficient access back there to it. But yes, those uses are allowed, and as you see, a 4,000 square foot building could be replicated at the rock a couple of few times. At the rock rendering display, I mean, we, that they will have use for back there. Right. Just curious. The only thing that would start to fill the site, of course, is detention and also parking. So as a storage building by itself would not generate much parking, but if a small retail use went in. So, I'm just talking about if they expand the storage, it still, would, it still wouldn't trigger any more parking because they don't have it. It would trigger just a little bit more. If you look at it, right where the building is, immediately to the east, they're showing a handful of parking spaces. And that's all that's required okay. as a storage building. Yes. So currently under its zoning, it would be eligible for 33 apartment units or an office complex of some type Correct. under the current zone. And its only limiting factors are really the regular shape of it and size and then getting enough access. If there's more traffic being generated, then the access becomes more critical as a two-way drive for full fire access, et cetera. A larger parking area triggers more landscaping, more stormwater management. So the property will, will fill up. It's just, it's not showing that way now. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Then I will open the public hearing portion on this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. State your name. I think you know the rule, right? Yes, sir. I think I do. Good evening, Planning Commission. Matthew Eman, 4560 Drive North Drive, Suite E. Um, here representing the, the Freeman, um, Freeman Investments. Uh, Mike Freeman's here. He'll answer any other questions that, that y'all might have. Um, as, as Matt, uh, as, as Barry will cover, um, the plan right now is to put a 4,000 square foot um, storage building on this property to serve their, their electrical business that they currently have um, in the, the, the Freeman Investment track on, on the screen. Um, they currently use an end cap of their building, it's like 3,600 square feet. Um, they, they'd like to get out of that building um, and, and be able to lease it out to the dentist office or some similar place rent, you know, versus just have stuff stored, stored in there. Um, three years ago, they had a, a, a job trailer stolen off the site. They had no way to secure the site. Had a job trailer store off, uh, on the site on the, over the weekend. Was stolen. Had over $200,000 worth of equipment, tools, and uh, lighting packages inside of that. But that's their biggest thing. They just want to get this back out of the public view, so they're not, you know, their vehicles aren't part of the front of that site. They would like to get them back here, um, be secure, and have a have a building they can store that in. Nothing to be stored outside except the, the vehicles and the trailers that, that go with them. The job trailers will be parked outside. Um, the only thing that's outside. Um, one thing that's, that's on this property that's unique. Usually, when you guys see me up here, I'm coming up here trying to take something, turn to something a lot more dense. The previous are the opposite of that. They could put 34, 33, 34 apartment complexes on here, as mentioned, right up to the property line. There's no required buffer. If they want to, they could build a three, three-story apartment right next to the property line, and we're perfectly zoned for that. In fact, that's what the zoning says we should be doing with this property. You want highest and best use of it? Put three-story apartments on the back property line right next to those adjacent houses. The previous aren't trying to do that. They want to be better neighbors than that. They, they, they work right there. They, they're trying to be good neighbors. But they want somewhere they can secure their stuff. They have the right, they should have the right to better secure their stuff and to be able to get off of the main front of the building um, where it's out there just for anybody to drive by and see it and go try to steal it. You know, $2,000 is a pretty big hit. They'd like to not, not have to have it again. Um, if this property is not rezoned, the adjacent property to the left is for sale right now. It's 5.93 acres. Somebody bought that, rezoned it, put it together. It's 141 apartment units. They could be built there tomorrow with a little bit of rezoning on that. Um, on this property. So that's, that's to me, would be the worst case scenario if I lived in, in the Apple. Um, any of these subdivisions, any of these rooms over to our right, um, that would be the, the worst case scenario. That's not what Freemans are trying to do. They're going to much, much less dense usage. 
Um, also, I know Subdivision Well was one of my first big jobs when I came to Valdosta. A um, lot less gray hair in my, my beard and, and that hair, but um, this property was never included as part of the residential portion of the, the Highland Subdivision. Um, this was always intended to be something on the commercial front. Obviously, it's not as, not as pretty. It's not, you know, it's kind of tucked away. It doesn't have the commercial frontage as the other part of the development up top. That's why it wasn't done in CN zone. That wasn't why it wasn't originally zoned. It was only RP. Um, RP was kind of, you know, something they thought maybe all the parts could get back there or something like that. Um, being a commercial use, being, being an accessory structure to the, the commercial business that the freedoms operate, uh, the residential business, it has been rezoned, and that's the reason why I'm coming here for that. Um, as far as the fencing question, frankly, you always have the stuff I've, I, 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 you always make this question. Um, there is one part of that that does have a fence along it. Mm -hmm. The Freemans would like to put a fence up around the entire thing for security. They want to chain link fence. And then the parts that are appropriate, they're going to put, put a you know, wood slat fence on that edge. Um, but they want a the fence. They're, they're actually adamant they're going to have a fence to have it secure because as is right now, they just can't, can't hold their stuff. They can't, you know, can't lock it up. Um, as far as multiple buildings, yeah, there's, there's totally a chance they could do uh, multiple buildings right there. There's all kinds of other things that could be right there. Um, Nothing nearly as, as dense as what's currently on for it. You know, apartment complexes is going to be by far the most roof line, the most dense unit use possible, the most parking, the most demand on all the stuff, and the most noise for the neighbors next door. So um, we're not asking for that. We're, we're asking for, for one 4,000 square foot unit, plus what you need. And that's, that's what their business would, would, uh, would be supported by. Um, they would like to, to be able to secure their stuff, <coughs> get all their equipment behind a, a lock fence, and hopefully be able to rent, rent out that. Uh, 3,000 square foot, basically closet they've got right now, and, and there's something better. Any questions for the speaker? I, I do. So, man, just, 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 just say something about what you said. So, uh, this area originally for a Highland subdivision was not deemed a common area for a Highland. It wasn't, and you could tell it was a right system. It was a common area, you had access to it. There's nothing that's ever done. Uh, we've done some on Valley Road. By, by code, by code, <laughs> it's, we would have to have, have, to have access to it. But no, it was not. If I'm elated to do I love pro growth, pro business, everything, it tickles me that they, they need to move. So if, it, if they're currently filling three to 3,600 feet, maybe build this building a little bit bigger. I don't know. And that, and maybe that may take some stress away uh, from. The, the neighbors about having multiple buildings. Yeah. I'm just, just yeah. straight. And I, and I won't, I won't, I won't speak with Mike. Mike has yeah. to come correct me. Oh, yeah. I think that 3,700 feet is that's what was there. Okay. And they could probably make, maybe make a little space. They want to go and build for future growth oh, a little bit. Absolutely. Make, make it big enough where they need. Um, but, but the intent also, and we've got this, you know, building we're showing there. We also have another layout where the building is shorter, it's up top. But from the face of the building to the pocket line, we've got over 50 feet. We're not required to have any buffer there. We're going to put that 20 foot. Sanitary sewers in there and plan to do some landscaping beside it also. So we're we're not going by code we could put right next to the setback line, you know, right. we could be a lot closer. We're we're trying to go on the other side of the property. We're trying to put everything, the building away from it, to try to be as kind as possible neighbors. We know the neighbors are gonna be um, not happy about us doing anything out there. You know, if I if I had lived there, I'd probably want to stay up, you know, vacant forever. But but that's not the best use for the freedom. That's not the best use of the property. I like what you've done here. I mean making the throat and then going down to the Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes, Matt, two questions. Number one, <laughs> that that piece was never intended to be a common area, but it has it been used as a common area? Have there been people picnicking on it or playing football or? Yeah, I, I can tell that's what we have for you. They've been about okay. it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this Matt. Sorry. <laughs> if, um, if they've been playing on it, they, they're they're more athletic than I am because it's not been mowed very often. Um, I'm not going to say someone's not walking across it or, you know, consider it part of your but that doesn't make it a common area. Okay. I mean, just because my sat there used it at one point in time, that doesn't, you know, right. that doesn't make it a, a common area. It was never deemed a common area. Okay. So, so one final question about the fence. It, we could literally put proposed on here if this is passed, but then wouldn't this is going to be put up, right? Their, their intent is 100% to fence the property. 100% yes, sir. I think there's a fence along a portion of it, frankly. I think there is too. I think there's, I mean, I I think there's, there's like four puppies in there, and I think two of them have fences and two of them don't. I saw some of them on Matt's photos while we were Just follow yeah, up. That's all the, two up, the two up top have, have fences, frankly. I'm yeah. not sure the bottom has that's on there. Part, part, of, part of that stands as far as not, they won't be completely fenced. Thank you. I think some, if not all, of those adjacent neighbors are here tonight. I can probably tell you that. Cool. Or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other questions, commissioners, for the speaker? Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me just clarify because I know we're probably going to have some neighbors that are going um, to complain about the, you know, seeing and the noise and all that, and that's perfectly. You can give me a take a seat, sir. Perfect. Well, this is for Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. So, were we? You say he's going to build the fence anyway, but were we to put that in as a condition, would there be an issue with that? No, that's the deck. Are you asking Matt or the gentleman is still seated? Well, I'm, I'm the first he's paid for it. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate that. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. Uh, Mike Freeman, 3886 Clean Street. Uh, to answer your question, yes, that, that's the whole purpose is okay. to put a fence up so things are behind a lot of people. Okay. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, the poor that's kind of what's happening with your mm -hmm. stuff nowadays. Especially when you're left with business and it's lights and copper wire and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, like Matt was saying, you know, what it's on for right now, you know, we could, we could just throw up something and, and people would be looking over a privacy fence in somebody's backyard and invading their privacy without seeing it. That's, mm -hmm. that's totally, and it could be farther from what we're trying to do. We just simply want to take the, when we built our other building, the end of it, there's 3,750 square feet, and it was originally designed to be split in two retail spots to lease out. But we needed storage space, so we kind of bit the bullet, and we started using that storage space. So we would like to get this rezoned so that we can put, move that storage back there out of the way behind lock and key, and we can meet those other two spots. You know, of course, that means you know, he can put us off, but there be two more businesses, two more tax revenue you know, streams for receiving and everything else. So, and that, that's the only thing. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to, you know, we don't work on the weekends, we don't work at night, we're not we're making much of noise and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, we do have cars coming in and out, stuff like that, but uh, we're not going to be out there at 9, 10 o'clock at night making much of noise, we'll be <coughs> or anything like that, trying to disturb people. So, and I, uh, one other point I want to make, I've had some of the neighbors, and I'm not sure which one, which lot, called me at one point that some people, I'm assuming live in that county property, were walking across and they were being annoyed and, and won't be a foot of the fence to stop that. So this will address that too. So, uh, but anyway, that's, that's all I got. So. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Just bring us one quick question. This is mm -hmm. to you, it's on, on Ricochet the map. So, uh, is this a, just a proposed four-side metal building? That proposing? Well, they told me that uh, the side close to the beams had to be well, dressed I, up a little bit, but yeah, just a, a standard metal building with some, some kind of a yeah. saw on it. I just wanted it is, I don't know if you can see it or not, so I don't know if they, that's going to be imposed or not. It all depends on what happens to the property in front of it in the future. Okay, very well. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the speaker? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward, state your name and address. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. My name is Richard Bates, and I live at 3838 Edinburgh Circle, which is my property is right against the property line that we're speaking of. I have some trees planted right along the back part of my property. There is a berm that is adjacent to this property that they are speaking of. Uh, and when we moved there in 2005, in the initial phase one of the Highland subdivision, then they had said that this berm would help reduce some of the noise from the Indianapolis Speedway out on Venus. Uh, that has helped to some degree, and that's why I planted trees to help make a buffer to protect the property. I do not, we have, uh, we have had contacts with the city about mowing that area and in the initial few years we got a hold I got a hold of Mr. Matt and they came out and mowed that property some because of I'm wanting to avoid snakes and animals that are 
been seen in this particular area, but I was informed several years ago that that was not in his uh, ability to have that property mowed, and it's been over a period of some four years that no, no mowing has been done, the grass is up, shrubbery is up, and it's not very appealing to uh, us as homeowners, but uh, it would be less appealing, in our opinion, that there be a building put in there that close to our homeowners' properties. And I would be very strongly opposed to any approval that you would see fit to place into that area, and I don't think it would be conducive to what we have experienced over this 15, 18 years. Uh, I don't have any uh, exact figures that we could pick out, but the narrowness of that property that is extended across the back is going to be very limited as to what could be put on that section behind our three houses of property of individuals that are here tonight. Um, but I would appreciate the consideration of refusing this approval, uh, and I think it would be to the best benefit of a homeowner's adjacent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any, any questions for Mr. Bates before he steps down? You want to ask him a question? If you don't mind, it would be a question. <clears throat> So, Mr. Bates, as you heard previously, the way that it is zoned currently, the Freemans could put a three-story apartment building there. If they don't get this zoning, and they are looking at trying to recoup some of their expenses, they possibly could build a three-story apartment building. Would you be, would you I would be, be happy very with strongly that? opposed to that. Any type of, of, of uh, building that would produce uh, occupancy, that would be looking over into my property that has been vacant for these 19 years. So the way it is currently zoned, he would not have to have in approval from anybody to go build a three-story apartment building, the way it's currently zoned. He could start tomorrow building a three-story apartment building the way it's currently zoned. Are you aware of that? No, I was not. Yes, sir. So as, an R, as it's currently zoned, RP... Mr. Freeman could start tomorrow to build three-story apartment buildings with no permission from anyone. Would he have to have a wall or a fence that would cover the length of the height of that? No, sir. As Mr. Matt Freeman, I'm sorry. <laughs> Matt, one of y'all need to change your name. As Mr. Matt Martin mentioned earlier, because your property is zoned RP and the property in question is zoned RP, there would not need to be any buffers between the apartments or your home, the way it is currently zoned. So in my estimation, the lesser of the evils would be to allow Mr. Freeman to get the rezoning, put his building, and build his fence. Or there could be a three-story apartment building going up tomorrow. I just wasn't sure if you were aware of the way it's currently zoned. I have heard some talk at some time back about the possibility that uh, uh, condos were going to be built there. Yes. And I did not see how that could fit on that property uh, that would would go all, all the way up to yes, sir. Uh, that berm mm -hmm. that is there uh, that, adjacent to that vacant lot is right. behind his place of business. And depending on where that berm is, if it's on your property or Mr. Freeman's property, the berm could be taken down because there are no requirements. It's not on my, not, that may be five feet. Okay. So if as it's on it Mr. Freeman's property, as it approaches. he would be able to remove that berm because there is no requirements for a buffer between that piece of property and your piece of property. Okay. Just as a point of clarification. Okay. Well, Thank you, Mr. Bates. Any other questions for the speaker before we step down? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case? Please step forward. Give your name and address, please. Board members. Uh, my name is Dan Johnson. Uh, I live at the P833 Edinburgh Circle. And uh, I'm going 
but I read here the purpose of Valdosta, Georgia's zoning ordinance, also known as the Land Development Regulations, LDR, is to ensure that the city's land is developed wisely. The LDR's zoning district protects properties from incompatible uses by establish, establishing specific permitted uses for each district. The LDR also aims to promote the public health, safety, uh, morals, and general welfare. <coughs> That's taken from the site, defining the purpose of zoning. My points of all are opposition to zoning commercial is as follows. Incompatible uses such as noise, chemical, commercial debris, smells, and it's just a, a visual mismarriage in usage of a business growth needs uh, should probably be met better if they went to the industrial parks we got established around the county. Uh, in my opinion, uh, if rezone what presents prevents the sale of this commercial property to any other kind of commercial property that could be out of the realm of what the intended initial intended use was. So you ain't got no way to stop them from reselling to somebody else to do something totally different under the commercial. Uh, and as you know, a home is a sizable, sizable investment for anyone. And if this thing gets done commercial right behind my property, Jason to my property, my resale value is going to be diminished. Now, who's going to pay me for that loss? Uh, uh, the sub property uh, once belonged to the subdivisions who designed as a, as a common area, uh, no matter what they said it was. And it's supposed to be a buffer zone. Now, we, we were maintaining it as a, uh, a homeowner association for a while. And then we end up uh, just the upkeep of it. We end up uh, uh, just leaving it to, to the bank for free. I offered to buy it, that, that lot. However, it was astronomical for us, uh, what the bank wanted back after they got it for free. <laughs> there it goes. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, so we deed it to them, even though they said, you know, it used to be a part of the whole thing. No, it was always a part of the, the subdivision's design of the buffer area, and then as such, we treated it as a common area, and it was maintained for several years until we completed it over. Uh, and I feel that rezoning would be a breach of our safety, privacy, and general uh, welfare. <clears throat> uh, from what I noticed now in recent, I, I saw the survey. The survey itself is not correct because the survey state that I see that they, the new survey state they put out there, is is is, is wrong because my sprinkler system is behind the, the survey point. So it's, it's something wrong. They, when that, that property was brand new, they put the, uh, the sprinkler system according. They would never put it across the property line. But the new survey that's out there now is about five feet inside the, uh, the line, meaning, well, you can't see. But that southernmost line right there, the survey point is incorrect. But anyway. And my other, my, my last thing is, uh, if they, somebody mentioned putting a chain link fence on it, um, a chain link fence, and we, we got a residential area here, it's like living next to a prison. If you don't do anything, do it nice. I mean, since you're affecting my property that is straight up in the face there. You know, uh, that's, that's all the comments I have is just that. I, I'm, I'm going to take a loss. All my neighbors along that, that street, I'm going to take a loss. I mean, uh, they raise our property tax, then I can come back and, and, and rezone this. And then we, we're not going to ever recover from something like that. I know some of the members may be saying, like, you can't do anything else to it, but 
like I said, I offered to buy it, but then they got the free and wanted to tell it to me at an astronomical price, and that wasn't fair either. So when you do the little guy, do it great. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any questions for Mr. Johnson before we step down? Uh, I just, Mr. Johnson, I'll just tell you one thing. I appreciate your letter you submitted. I appreciate your service. Uh, but just, again, to go on what Mr. Roundtree had said earlier, the, Mr. Freeman has stated here tonight that he will erect a complete six-foot-high wood privacy fence down the property line. Not a chain link, but a wood privacy fence. And just, just to echo him, what Ms. Roundtree said, is that today or tomorrow morning he can start a three-story apartment building with no fence, no buffer at all, right up, right up against your property. Just want to make sure you understand those two things. I understand. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Your points are very appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Stead. Time has expired for those who wish to speak against this, but I see you. If there's anyone else who would like to speak against this, I will allow a few more minutes. I got one thing. Mm -hmm. oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. This will be the last speaker. So okay, go ahead. Whichever you want to like to I live in the pool in the My name is Cameron Lamp, 3839 Edinburgh Circle. What was your last name, sir? Lamp. Lamp. Okay, thank you. Uh, I recently moved into that house five, six months ago, particularly because there was nothing behind there. And it was open property for my children to play, and we are actually mowing it and maintaining part of that land right now, yeah. even though it is not part of our land. I know uh, Danny is as well, so you know it, it does feel like my property is going to be getting shorter, even though it wasn't a property of mine to begin with. Um, to your guys' point that tomorrow they could put up apartments there, you know, that's the last thing I want. And it sounds like they're trying to be, for the most part, respectful on that side of things. But from point from smallest point to our property line is 104 feet. Um, your typical apartment building is 100 feet, so there'd be no room for a road or two-way access or a, uh, you know, a fire truck or anything to get down there. So uh, it is very tight here, and I do like what he drew up here to maintain it as far as away from residential property, but I am also against this, and I do think it would diminish my property value and it would be harder on me to resell in the future. Yes. Um, I'll that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Well, that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further discussion before we move on? Then I will seek a motion, please. If I may. May I do that? All right. So I'm going to recommend approval of VA 2024 11 with one condition, and that that is a six foot wood fence between this property and the three properties that back up to this piece of property. An opaque wooden fence. An opaque wooden fence. Um, Matt, is there a, a definition of that in your rules and regulations? It is. That's okay. a, it it is. Is. All right, we have a, a motion, I believe, by Commissioner Roundtree to recommend approval with one condition added. Molly, did you get that condition? Okay, is there a second? Mr. Right. Chairman, I'll second the motion. All right, we have a second by Commissioner Baez. All those in favor of the motion to recommend approval with the one new condition, please raise your hand. I think that's unanimous, Molly. Thank you, Commissioner.